Hi guys, today's video is all about the electrolysis of concentrated copper chloride, but we're using it as an example of an aqueous salt. So all the stuff in today's video can be applied to any other aqueous salt. This is what electrolyzing concentrated copper chloride looks like. What you've got as your electrolyte is your copper chloride, which is aqueous, showing that it's in solution. The first thing we're going to do, like normal, is to look at the ions that are present and work out whether they be attracted to the cathode or to the anode. So in this case, the ions that I've got here are Cu2 plus and Cl minus. The Cu2 plus will be attracted to the cathode and the Cl minus will be attracted to the anode. And normally this would be kind of the end of your decision on which ions go where and what's going to happen next. But this time you've got water in there too and water kind of messes things up a bit because in solution, water can break up into H plus and OH minus ions, which means that I've also got these ions present. So, as well as the Cu2+, the H+, will also get attracted to the cathode, and the OH- will also get attracted to the anode. So this video is basically about how you make the decision over what gets discharged at which electrode. Let's start with the cathode and look at what might happen there. So at my cathode, I've got my Cu2 plus and my H pluses, both of which could get reduced. So if I follow through the example of Cu2 plus being reduced, it will make Cu metal, the ion in its elemental form. So Cu2 plus metal or solid. Um, and then you need two electrons on the left hand side to balance that one out. So Cu2 plus plus two electrons gives you Cu metal. The other option is if the H plus gets reduced, then what it becomes is it becomes hydrogen gas, which exists as a diatomic gas. So you need to write that as H2. To balance this out, I need to balance the hydrogens first by adding the big two in front, and then two electrons also to the left-hand side to show that H plus becoming reduced. So the real question is, how do I decide which of these two things happens? Here's the answer. So the one that's most likely to be reduced is always the least reactive one. So the least reactive one will always be produced at the cathode. Here's a reactivity series that I prepared earlier. The two elements that we're comparing today are hydrogen and copper. And what you can see here is that the hydrogen is more reactive than the copper. The rule is, is that the least reactive one always gets discharged. So that must mean that the copper gets discharged in this case. If we go back to our original question, that means that it's the copper equation that definitely does happen and I can cross out the other one. What that means is that you'd see that electrode being coated with an orange solid, which would be the copper metal coating the electrode there. Let's look at the anode to work out what happens in that scenario. So let's write the equations of what could happen if both of those ions at the anode were oxidized, because oxidation always happens at the anode. So if the Cl- was oxidized to form Cl2, your, it would also kick out two electrons in this equation here. The other option is the OH- kicks out some electrons to make water and to make O2. Now we need to work out how to make the decision here between which of these two ions gets oxidized in this case. At the cathode, it depended on the reactivity of the substance. At the anode, it depends on the concentration. So if you've got a dilute aqueous solvent, then the OH minuses will get oxidized preferentially. Whereas if you've got a concentrated solution, then the Cl minus will get oxidized preferentially. Now bear in mind, if you've got a copper bromide or something like that, then the bromine will replace the chlorine in my example here. The only exception that you should know about is that if you're confronted with anything with a sulfate ion or a nitrate ion, they will never get oxidized preferentially to anything else pretty much. They're really, really difficult to oxidize. So never try to write an equation with either of those two things. So looking back at the example, you can see that because it's concentrated, that means that the Cl- will get oxidized to form Cl2, it will discharge the Cl2. That means that what you'll see is a pale green gas being evolved from the anode or the positive electrode. 
Right, that is all you need to know about the electrolysis of aqueous salts. We're also going to do a video on the electrolysis of sulfuric acid, so check that out if you would like another example just to go through this once more.